the assistant brand manager for Crazy Blue. And we're going to be going through just how to make a nice little holiday sign. Uh, I am, well, I was born in Florida, uh, moved to Georgia when I was very young, spent the rest of my life in Georgia. I went to the University of Georgia, go dogs, just won a national championship. Hopefully we're about to win another. Um, but yeah, I would love to hear where all of you are from. Um, I know my whole team's here in Georgia, but I know everyone else comes from all over. So I'd love to see in the chat where everyone else is calling in from. We see Kelly from California. Hi in California. It's probably a little bit nicer weather-wise there than it is right now. We've been getting a lot of rain, a lot of cold. Uh, so jealous of maybe some warmer temperatures. Awesome. Well, I guess to kind of get started, I'll go through some of the materials we have and then we can get right into it. So I know everything was linked online and I kind of went with some of the things that I had and that I used, but there's so many other options. Michael's has an incredible assortment of different Christmas and holiday type themed things. So um, some of the things I got, some of it I'll be using today, some of it I won't, but we have twine. And then we have um, a nice little wood circle. Uh, you can use this to paint, or you can't, you would paint this, you can put it on the sign. Um, and then we have our letters. There's different size letters, um, but I liked the bigger ones, just a little bit easier to see from far away, like you can see over here. And then we have our crazy glue. Uh, this is the main thing we'll be using today. Uh, it's great for a lot of different surfaces, but it does work particularly well with wood and plastic and ceramic. So we'll be using it to attach everything we do paint and work on to the sign uh, at the end of the project to bring it all together. Um, and then I have many, many, many different colors of paints. I'll be using mostly blues and whites and some greens and browns to paint trees. Uh, but yeah, does anybody have any questions about any of the materials? And I don't, oh, we have one message in the chat, but that's not what it was. Okay, cool. Well, if that's the case, uh, Carrie, do you want to switch it to my overhead view and I'll go ahead and get started? Perfect. All right, I'm going to slide over a little bit just so I can center it a little bit more. Um, I have a few different plates just to try and keep things relatively clean. You can obviously use napkins or paper towels or whatnot as well. But what I'll be doing is starting with the painting uh, just to give it time to dry so that we're not getting our hands all dirty uh, when we go ahead and glue it on at the end. So the phrase that I've chosen to use is let it snow. There's lots of options that you can do. I think with the larger letters, you want to have a shorter phrase or a few less letters, so I think it works really well for that. Um, but if you want to do a longer phrase or even an address um, to put outside your door or something like that, you're more than welcome to do that as well. But I'll be doing that at Snow, so give me just a second to sort out the letters I need. Um, I saw that one person had said they were from California, um, but I think a few more people have joined since then. Where else is everyone uh, calling in from? It's looking pretty quiet in the chat, Nick, but I um, remind people that you can definitely chat your responses or anything down at the bottom. There should be just a chat bubble for you to give your answers or ask us any questions that you may have. Perfect. Well, quiet is not necessarily bad. Maybe that means everyone's locked in on their craft. Um, will anybody be painting and gluing and crafting along with me or are we just watching? Um, and I know the chat's quiet, but if you do want to send a message, uh, let me know if you'll be doing this with us or maybe doing it later. 
uh, but we do have all of our letters out. Um, it is not in the right order, but that's okay. We don't need it to be in the right order yet. Um, okay, so what I'm gonna start with is painting what I've considered to be a little snow globe. I gotta get used to having a camera up there and down here. Um, so we're gonna be painting this first. Uh, it's gonna be the biggest thing to paint and it's gonna have the most layers. So we wanna give that time to dry before we add it on at the end. But what I found is it helps to kind of just paint it all at once. You don't necessarily need to let the paint dry in between layers for a lot of the things you're doing because it tends to blend a little bit better when you just keep going. So I'll be using white. Um, this one's been through a little bit, so it's not as white as it was, but it paint is still white on the inside. But I'll be using white. I'll be using the wisteria blue uh, to help give us a little bit of a sky color. And then I'll be mixing that in with sailing sky as well as this bright plum and our bright blue to create like a nice almost sunset appearance. And then we'll also be using the mint green and the milk chocolate for our trees. Um, so I'll go ahead and get started on that. Um, one thing that I do almost every time that I always tell myself I'm not gonna do next time is use too much paint. Uh, I always think I need a big puddle of paint to start painting, but this is a very small circle and you don't really need that much paint uh, to cover the whole thing, especially if you're just doing shading for part of it. So all of these things that we're using in this class, you can find at Michael's. Uh, we had links in the sign-up class, but you can find them in store as well, however you prefer to do your shopping. But it is a perfect one-stop shop for a craft like this. Um, and one thing that I would recommend, if you don't like getting anything on your hands, you might want to wear gloves for this. Um, I think we all know that super glue creates a quite permanent bond. And we do have our brush today for this project, which is great for keeping it off of your hands. But like any craft, you're probably going to end up getting a little bit on yourself. So if you are a little bit weird about getting things on your hands or just don't like to get your hands dirty, I would recommend wearing gloves for this. I won't be. Um, I work with super glue quite often, so I'm kind of used to it at this point. And um, yeah, so I have a four pack of brushes. Um, I don't think anything on this project requires a particular amount of precision. You can do almost all of it with pretty much just one brush. Um, but to start, we'll just go ahead and apply uh, our sky color on the whole circle. Um, you can leave space at the bottom, but I think in terms of just making sure the coloring is consistent, when you do add on the white for the snow, it helps to do the whole circle. Um, I like to apply more on this first layer than any other point in the project, so you do have a good amount of color on there to mix in as you add other colors later. Um, this will probably be, if you aren't wearing gloves, when you start to get paint on your fingers as you do have to kind of hold down the corners as you paint or it's just going to fly all around like it is right now. All right, so now that we have this first layer, we're going to go ahead and clean off our brush. I have a jar over here to the side. I don't think that's fully visible on the camera, but it's right here. I'm just gonna go ahead and clean the brush in between some colors, not all. I think that when you're doing a bit of mixing with the colors on the canvas or <laughs> on this little circle, uh, it's fine to dip your brush in the other colors if you know you're not gonna be using a bunch. Um, I'm not trying to get too much on this because we are focused on just adding in a little bit of it. We don't want to overpower the, the base layer we already put down. We're just trying to add in a little bit of texture 
to the sky. Um, I guess this half right here is probably going to be the sky side. We're going to add the snow on the bottom. Um, but that will be after we finish the sky. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little purple now, uh, just a small tap. We're going to mix that in towards the top. We want to put the darker colors at the top and then the lighter colors on the bottom. So it gives a nighttime, but not late night kind of feel. Try and pull that color around a little bit, but not make the whole thing that way. Then we'll add a little bit of darker blue to the top. probably more than I would typically use, but every sky is different, so we should be fine. Just make sure we get it as layered as possible so it doesn't look like it's just one color. I'm going to actually go ahead and add a little more of that initial blue in the middle just to kind of balance out with the, the darker blue we just brought in. And one of the plus sides of using these little squares is that they, or circles, is that they come in large packs of, I think, 10 or 12. So if you don't like how the first one looks, you can just do another one. Add a little bit more purple in towards the top. All right, I think that should be good. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean my brush now. And then we're gonna add in the snow on the bottom. We can be a bit thicker with the application of this one just because we do want it to be as wide as possible. So I'm going to add in some down here and then I'm going to get a good amount on the brush. I'm going to try and paint whatever we want the line to look like for the horizon. And then we're just going to even that out as much as we can. bit more white. All right. So if you see the little fingerprints that I left in the sky, I found you can get rid of those pretty easily. By just bringing your brush, clean it off, and just brushing that out. You've got a lot of color sitting on there already, and it's not dry yet, so you can kind of just brush that out. So this is the background. I am going to let that dry for a little while before I add on the trees. So while we do that, I'm going to put this off to the side right here. We can go ahead and get started on our letters. So you can see in this side, I kind of just did basic colors for each letter. Um, I'll probably do something similar to that again, just to make sure we're not spending too much time painting. But you can do however you want with that. You can add designs to the letters. You can mix colors. Um, I found one thing that's pretty fun is to pour a bunch of paint in the plate and then move the plate around and let it swirl in. And then you can just drop the letters in, and it'll create like a marble effect. Um, but that does take quite a while to dry because you're applying a whole coat of paint as opposed to just paint it on. So I won't be doing that today. But I'm going to go ahead and add in this robin's egg blue as well. And we'll use that on some of the letters. But I found for these letters, it's best to do two coats. 
um, just to make sure that the color takes over the, the texture of the wood. Does anybody have any questions so far? Not so far, it looks like. Great. So I believe it was Robin that's been the one that's been active in our chat so far. Uh, are you doing anything fun these, these holidays, Robin? So we have Kelly. They said she's Kelly. Um, oh, Kelly's sorry. just watching today. Okay. I don't know how I got Robin out of Kelly, but we're glad to have you here, Kelly. I'll be moving this off to the side on another plate I have sitting over there. If I paint them, we'll let the first layer dry and then we'll go ahead and add on that second layer. No matter how much paint you put it on the first time, it's still going to have a little bit of wood showing through. So I found you don't have to be super thorough. You can kind of just get a nice initial layer down and then go back on with the second layer and get it. We can spick and span. Kelly said, thanks. Glad to watch this fun sign creation. <laughs> Great. Great. All right. So we got those letters. Go ahead and switch colors. Using our main sky color for the, the next word. Some other ideas or things I've seen that you can do for a sign like this is use some of that red and white twine that I showed earlier on to make a candy cane and then put that somewhere on your sign. It adheres pretty well with Crazy Glee. You just got to be make sure not to be putting the glue on your hands when you're applying it to the sign. But that turns out really nicely. And then you can mix that in by painting an ornament or maybe a landscape that incorporates some red to kind of match with that candy cane. But I wanted to focus more on the snow side for this. Go ahead and dry my brush. So now we're on to snow. Just do that darker blue for this last one is that's going to be what we want to be the main part we're focused on the snow here. So let's make snow the boldest color. So I think Carrie mentioned this earlier, but for those of you that will be completing the project again later, this will be recorded and posted on YouTube tomorrow. I think you can find that um, on the signs behind me, which we'll pan back to towards the end of the project, but it would just be Michael's classes on YouTube. And if you do make something, you can go ahead and post it on Instagram as well if you want, and you can tag us with our Crazy Glue page, which is also linked there. And then we have a few hashtags to use as well. If you want to post your creation, um, we've got hashtag Michael's classes, hashtag make it with Michael's, and then hashtag it takes a little crazy. Um, if you do happen to post. All right, so I've gotten that first layer of paint on for each letter. And with the amount of time it's taken to do that, there's probably 
the first letters are probably dry enough to go ahead and get that second layer on. So we'll go ahead and do that next. And then we can start adding on our trees and then we can start getting things on the sign, wrapping it up. So we'll go ahead and put on this second layer. I think it's pretty obvious right away that you can't really see that wood nearly as much as you could before. It's more of just one clean color. So since I am a part of Crazy Glue. I can, figured I'd go ahead and ask a few questions about Super Glue and see how much you all know. So I think the first and most important one would be we all probably know what it's like to get Super Glue in our hands and it's not the best feeling. So does anybody know what you would use to remove Super Glue if you're to get it on your hands or something else? Carol yes. said nail polish remover, okay. That is correct. So acetone is gonna be your best bet for getting super glue off of something, particularly yourself. Um, I've found in my experience, uh, says I've got my super glue on myself quite a few times. Uh, I like to get a little, um, one of those little puff balls, little cloud things. I, I know there's a much more official term for that. But I like to dip that in acetone and then just kind of hold that out on my finger for 30 seconds to a minute. And then you kind of you wash your hands with some more water and it typically gets the super glue off. Sometimes you've got to hold it on for a little bit longer depending on how much you've got on yourself. But it is a great resource for moving super glue if you happen to get it on yourself while crafting or fixing. Yeah. So does anybody know, for my next question, does anybody know how or where Superglue was first created? This one's probably less likely to be something that you've seen in your own life. <laughs> So I see Kelly said, no. Does anybody else think they might know? I will take that silence as a no. So super glue was actually initially developed by a doctor in the military as a quick sealant for wounds that typically they couldn't get to quickly enough or have the right equipment to stop some seal something off uh, in order to prevent fe infection. So it was actually developed during World War II and it was used to quickly seal off injuries to help the soldier not get any infection or something like that until they were to get proper medical care. Um, so we no longer use it for that. Uh, we don't recommend using it for that, but that is how it first came to be. And now we use it for a variety of other things. All right, we've got one letter left. And then it looks like I have one that I might wanna to touch up a little bit and then we'll get back to the circle. All right, 
looks like I can have a little bit more on this tea. And I think that's good for our letters. And again, you're more than welcome to add on a pattern or layer your colors or do all sorts of things with those letters to make it pop how you want it to pop. But I'm gonna go for a more simplistic approach uh, just to make sure that we're not spending too much time on that. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and bring this back out. As you can see, it's dry. So we're going to go ahead and add our trees now. The reason we wanted to let it dry before we put on the trees is because we don't necessarily want to layer the colors much with these trees. We want them to be green and not a mixture of green and white and blue and all of the other colors we've used so far. So we'll start by adding in the stems. I'm just going to do three trees today. And this is probably a part where you could use a more precise brush if you have a variety of different brushes. Um, I'm trying to see if I can do everything with just this one brush, but if you do have a thinner brush, that would probably be the time to use it. Okay. Now we get our green. And we kind of just tap in an upward motion. And then let it settle at the top. It's not quite as fancy as how Bob Ross does it, but it gets the job done for what we're trying to accomplish today. Hey, Nick, do you think that you could center the, the work a little bit more? Oh, yeah. I got lost there, didn't I? No worries. There we go. So we've got our three trees right there. And then we're going to add snow. So that is unfortunately one thing I can't do with that brush. So I'm going to bring in this more fine tip brush. Just get a little bit of white paint on it. Just do some taps on it. Try not to add too much paint at any given time to keep the snow in smaller sizes. But we know no snowflakes are the same, so we want to make sure to add a little bit of variety with the size of the dots. Nick? Yeah. Just wanted to let you know you're at the halfway point of today's class. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So I think that's where we're going to settle on this. Um, if you're feeling extra risky, you could go ahead and add in a few more trees on the bottom if you wanted to. You could try and add some snow to the trees, but I'm going to settle here for now. So we're going to move this off to the side and let it dry a little bit. And we'll bring out our sign. Go ahead and move our paint off to the side and make sure we have this centered. All right, so I think what I'm going to do first is kind of lay out everything that I want to include. And then we can start attaching. I think there's a variety of different ways you can attach the letters. I have a fairly symmetrical brain, so I like to have things centered and straight. But if you want to waterfall it, you can do that. There's lots of different ways you can approach this. And I also picked words where I could easily center it. But if you want to use smaller letters, more words, longer words, numbers, you can do that as well. So we have that. I'm going to go ahead and open up these snowflakes. Again, tie into that snow theme that I think is becoming pretty obvious here.
So what I would typically do with these is I would cut out each one before I take it off so I can get an idea of where it's going to go on there to fill fit. But I have done this before, so I have an idea now, and I'm just going to start attaching them. Um, but first, we'll do our letters. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the super glue. You can find this at Michael's. I talked a little bit on this earlier, but I do prefer to use the brush for things like this just to try and maximize the or minimize the amount of super glue that I come into contact with. And I think the brush is great for applying it to the back of a wood surface like those letters. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up. Put our brush right here. And what I like to do, I'll probably do one brush on the side, one on the top for each letter, and then I'll hold it down for about between five and 10 seconds. Um, you can see on our packaging, which was a lot prettier before I tore it open, uh, that it does take about 10 seconds to cure on any given item. Um, we'll see with the uh, circle that I painted, we're gonna spend a little bit more time on that just to make sure it gets down. It's not a flat, even surface like some of these are because it is larger. So we wanna make sure we give that extra time to bond and we're gonna add a little weight to the top as well to make sure it does that. But for our letters, just get a nice brush like that, a little bit more. And then we just hold down for about 10 seconds. And then we can move on to our next letter. One thing that I always do that I probably shouldn't is immediately wiggle it after to see if it's secure. Uh, the bond has taken place at this point, but you still want to give it a little bit of time uh, and not try to wiggle it around because super glue does not apply to itself very well, which is pretty ironic. Um, so if you do move it around and it comes loose because it hasn't fully set yet, it's going to be really hard to glue it back to that same spot. And I find myself moving to the bottom left of the screen every time. I don't know why that is. Another great feature about the brush is that it does stand up on its own, as you can see right here. It has a longer base. So that makes it great to where you don't have to hold the brush while you're using it. It gives you an extra hand to manipulate whatever you're trying to glue. But as you can see, if we go back to those first few letters, they're on there. If you threw the sign at a wall, they might fall off, but anything short of that, and it should stick indefinitely. <laughs> Another cool thing about super glue is that it is technically waterproof because the bond is formed using the moisture in the air. So all super glue is sealed before you purchase it because once air starts getting into it and moisture is added to the chemicals, then it starts to bond. Um, so if you were to spill water on this, I don't know if these paints wash out. I haven't read all the details on that, but the super glue will not. Which makes it a great indoor outdoor option. As I get close to finishing these letters, I'm thinking about where I'm going to put the snowflakes. They'll probably end up on the bottom, and I could maybe put a little one in the middle right here.
I slid it down. Uh, does anybody have any questions uh, as we get through this part of the craft? Looks good so far. Great. Um, for those of that you, those of you that have been using the chat, does anybody have a particular phrase that always brings them to the holidays the most? Whether it's a line from a song or a movie or just something that people say during the holidays, does anybody have a favorite phrase? Go ahead and apply the first snowflake down here. Put that in that corner. Go ahead and get this smaller one. Put it over here. Get the other small one, put it right there. And then we'll do a second bigger one on the left side. So all that we have left at this point is attaching this to the top. It looks like we still have a little bit of paint that hasn't dried yet. So I'm going to give it another minute or two for that to dry before I glue it on. Um, like I mentioned earlier, because it's not sitting perfectly flat on the wood, um, we're going to want to add weight to it after we add our glue and give it a little bit extra time to make sure that it adheres fully. Um, if I were to just brush on the back and hold it down with my hand, it probably wouldn't sit as well as we want it to. Um, but while we wait on that to dry, do you want to go ahead and flip the camera back? Uh, and we can make sure we get through those handles so people know what to tag. Perfect. So yeah, as you can see, mirrored. Um, as you can see behind me, we've got our three hashtags at the top. If you post us on social media, you can find us at Make It With Michaels, Michaels Classes, or It Takes a Little Crazy. And then you can find this video tomorrow on YouTube on Michael's stores and our Instagram is crazy glue official if you want to tag us. Um, but I will go ahead and you can go ahead and flip me back um, and I will start gluing this last piece. Oh yeah, and if you did make this along with us, go ahead and send your pictures in the chat and let's see what we've all created. All right, so this will be more super glue than it's applied to anything else, but we do want to be thorough here. This is a bigger item. I'm going to start by working my way around the edges. All right, so we're going to go ahead and put that where we want it. And then I'm actually going to get my jar that I've been using. I'm going to put that on top. Just let it sit. I'm probably going to let that sit for three to five minutes, just to make sure it's fully on there before I take it off. Um, with that being said, just, and I, I think we've probably gotten through the questions part. I don't think we have any questions on this, um, but I guess I'll do my, my little wrap up bit as we let that sit for a little bit, um, since there's not really anything for me to, to work on anymore. Um, but my name was Nick. It was nice uh, talking to all of you. Um, and I hope that you enjoy making this if you make it at home or if you've made it today. Um, and if you post, we've got our hashtags right here. Um, but yeah. It was, it was nice doing this for all of you. Um, I'm gonna wait another minute before I take this off and then do the grand reveal. <laughs> but we watched it get made, so it's not gonna be anything too spectacular. Do I craft at home? Um, yes, uh, 
I, I think taking this, this job has definitely made me uh, a little bit more crafty at home. I do have my own set of paint and, and canvas at home that I've been messing around with. Um, but yeah, I would say not as much as I want to, uh, but it's definitely something I do enjoy doing. Yes. Awesome. But this is what our final item looks like. And you can see the paint all over my hands as I'm very good at doing that. But yeah, um, I guess you can go ahead and flip the camera back and I will go ahead and prop this up where the other sign was. But there we go. That is our little holiday sign. Uh, lots of different options to make it your own, but that's all I got. It was nice talking to all of you and working on this craft. And go ahead and check out michaels.com if you want to see other classes that we have. Um, but yeah, thank you. <laughs>